What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about seven amazing things to do in Bergen, Norway. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure I'm not. Americans would probably say Bergen or Bergen or maybe you'd say like Björgen, Björgen. I'm not sh I've never heard anyone say it. I'm just kind of guessing. But uh, Americans really don't know anything about Bergen, Norway. Americans barely are aware of Oslo. Probably would be the number one place Americans know of in Norway. And even then, they wouldn't really know what goes on there or what to see or what it's like. So Americans definitely are not familiar with Bergen. So, as a matter of fact, I kind of want to take a look at where it is. Bergen, Bergen, Norway. If Google will help me out here, take a quick look at a map. Okay, wait a minute, I gotta zoom out. Okay, and Oslo is here. So Bergen is on the western coast. Oh, that is such a cool spot. Because it's by the water, there's a bunch of islands. Oh, I love this. Okay, okay, okay. That really helps, actually. So now I know maybe the kind of place and uh, the surrounding area of what, what you might be able to do there. But I'm still very interested to see what this video says. So today we're going to be taking a look at the city of Bergen, Norway. A place known okay. for its beautiful landscape, expensive prices, and surprisingly its up-and-coming street art scene. Anyway, I'm going to be taking a hard oh. look at this city to try- Street art? And of course it's beautiful there, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> like all of Norway is beautiful. I'm sure it's beautiful. Street art is pretty cool, too. And find out what the best it has to offer. Let's do it. I like that this is, I mean, he sounds American, this guy narrating. So I think he'll be able to explain it to me in a way that I can understand and that I will appreciate uh, Bergen even more. But so if you're like me, when I first started doing research about wow. Bergen, I didn't really know a lot of the history of Norway. And so I imagined sort of a small fishing village nestled in the fjords. But Bergen yeah. boasts a much bigger footprint than that. It's been yeah, yeah. Based on where it's located, I would think like, oh, it's this coastal city, probably p pretty cool. And But it sounds like there's a lot to Bergen. A major center for trade since 1020 AD. And with a current oh. population of 280,000, it's widely known for its higher education, media, international shipping routes, and tourism. Wow. So it's known for like a great place, not only to visit as a tourist, but like for the Norwegian people, it's important for their economy and for education. And it's beautiful and cool and people have boats. <laughs> so it's already cool. The latter of which has exploded in the last few years. The more I learned, the more I realized how many layers this city could have. Wow. I couldn't wait to explore. Look at all those houses up there in the hills. That is so cool, man. This is the kind of stuff where I feel like Norwegians are kind of kind of used to and familiar with, you know, amazing, incredible stuff like this, where you just don't see this in America. Uh, landscape and architecture like this. It's, it's amazing. Oh, oh. The fish market. Americans have a weird relationship with fish. A couple, some Americans enjoy it. Most Americans don't really eat fish. There's no big fish market in America. So I'll go ahead and start with the fish market because like I said, fishing has been a major aspect of Bergen's economy for hundreds of years. Right, right, right. Fishing is like big for Norway in general. Opening in 1200 AD. Today the market consists of an indoor market which is open year round and an outdoor market which is open during summer. Wow. Now the market has gotten fairly touristy, so the prices will be a bit inflated. Yeah, I bet you can get some amazing fish here that you would never be able to get in America. The thing is, a lot of Americans simply aren't used to eating different kinds of fish. But some love it. So, but if I was in Norway, in Bergen, you gotta. 
you gotta get some of this amazing fish. You. That being said, all the fish is insanely fresh and absolutely delicious. Uh -huh. So you end up not feeling too bad about paying a bit more. Yeah. You can pretty much pick any of the stalls because they all sell essentially the same stuff, but definitely wander around for a bit and check out the different stalls to see which has the freshest looking fish. Wow. I mean, in America, you just don't see markets out in the open with fresh meat. That's just not really an American thing you see anywhere. So that's just another cool thing about traveling to Norway and European places, Scandinavian places. It's just a different culture around that. So next, oh, I'll try the fjords. I had to look up the definition of a fjord. I still, <laughs> I, I kind of understand what a fjord is, but uh, the one thing I know is they are beautiful. I tackle the biggest tourist attraction in Bergen, and that is its fjords. Uh -huh. The fjord is basically a narrow body of water surrounded by huge jagged cliffs or mountains. Yeah, yeah. You, these don't really exist in America, but apparently they're everywhere in Norway. Just another thing Norwegians have that we don't. That are created over thousands of years by melting glaciers. And Norway has one of the largest concentrations of these in the world. Uh -huh. It's the kind of picture that you put on a postcard. Yeah. They're just that iconic. Now there are a ton of different fjords that you can travel to while in Bergen, depending on how much time you have. So if you're looking for- Yeah, I never thought you could- um, There's probably lots of boats and kayaking and canoeing that you can do to, to be in the fjord. You don't have to just look at it from far away. You can go actually like cruise down it. That is awesome. For specifics like tour packages or when the best time to go is, Definitely check out my write-up, which I'll put a link for in oh. the description, because there's just no way I can cover that much information in this video. Wow. Look at this, man. Look at this. I mean, this is like a once-in-a-lifetime. For an American, walking on this rock, looking over all of this landscape, would be like a lifelong, once-in-a-lifetime, like oh my god, am I really here kind of moment. Like, it seems not real. Brigen Hansetic Wharf. <laughs> Brigen Hansetic Wharf? I, I don't know what that means. Number three, the Brigen Hanseatic Wharf. This was the old port of Bergen. and was the oh. center of power for the Hanseatic League in the city. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Hanseatic League was a collective of German merchant guilds that came huh. to dominate maritime trade for over three centuries. And even though they weren't considered a state, they were the powerhouse of Europe during this time. Today- Wow. I'm, I'm glad he's including like a little history lesson here. As, uh, as far as this port in, in Bergen goes, it's beautiful and incredible, but it obviously has a very deep- history to it. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has sprung to life dozens of arts and craft shops. However, yeah. if you still want to find the unique, authentic atmosphere <laughs> of the Hanseatic period, don't be- I would buy these little trolls, oh my gosh. However, if you still want to find the unique- Oh, <laughs> I would buy one of these, uh, 100%. Authentic atmosphere of the Hanseatic period, don't be afraid to follow some of the narrower alleyways to the back of the building. I love this whole street food street market thing as well. I've never been anywhere that has something like that. I think that is so cool. It'll get less touristy the farther back you go. Huh. <sighs> Beautiful. Artistic leaf. <laughs> Just got done taking a look at the fortress of Bergen uh, and the tower. The fortress of Bergen, Huss? Like a castle? Or specifically was pretty interesting. Uh, just how I like my monuments <laughs> with construction. <laughs> <laughs> so this monument is, this fortress is under construction? Like renovation or something? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Here we have your classic 18th century ladder. <laughs> so he, he's here while it's under construction, uh, which is unlucky. I'm not really sure what this fortress is or does. <laughs> Checks out. 
They covered pretty much the entire fortress's history, including a German ammunition ship blowing up the harbor that wounded like 3,000 people and almost destroyed the entire fortress. Wow. There's also a dining hall which you have to pay extra to get access to. I don't really recommend it. It's literally just room after room of tables and chairs. Huh. Yeah, this is probably fun if you're really, really into history. I'm sure this would be interesting and fun. This never ends. <laughs> it just go long and on. Yeah. <laughs> and then sort of a huge dining hall, King Arthur style. Kind of cool, but not really worth oh, the extra money. Th that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> as long as you, this place is so big, apparently you can get lost in there and trapped <laughs> and, and die just because you get stuck in the uh, <laughs> the castle forever. <laughs> the fortress itself is actually still an active military uh, post, I guess you would say. Uh, so you'll, every now and then you'll see soldiers kind of roaming the ground, which sort of adds the effect. All in all, huh. I'll say it was pretty well done. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. This whole city has such a friendly, like, coastal, community, like, feel to it. It's great. Mount Floyen? Floyen? Is that a mountain? So next on the list we have number five, Mount Fluyen, which is one of the most popular mountains to visit. It gives you spectacular 360 degree views of the city. So naturally there's gonna be a lot of tourists. Now there's two options, you can either hike up or you can take the funicular, which will take about eight minutes and cost you 125 <laughs> krone for a return ticket and 65 krone for a single. Now I recommend- Oh, I would love- I am not- <laughs> I'm probably not gonna be the guy to hike up the mountain. Uh, I am definitely- I would definitely go to this mountain, go to the top. You can see the entire city. That sounds incredible. And going on this tram, this cart that brings you to the top, Actually seems like it would be, like to an American, that would be a fun experience all in and of itself. Just riding this thing up to the top. I'm getting the... And we're not, we're not hiking to the top. <laughs> One way ticket to the top and then exploring some of the trails that start from there. And then just okay. walking back down, depending on the hike you choose. Okay. Now, there is a restaurant up there, but the prices, of course, as you can imagine, are very high. Uh, so I'd recommend steering clear from that and bring your own snacks and water and so forth. Wow. Wow, so there's actually, there's stuff at the top of the mountain to, to visit and restaurants and stuff? That's interesting. Wow. Uh, so going up the mountain is like a whole event. Like you could spend some time up there and also see the whole city and appreciate the view. Yeah, look at this. So this food, American. <laughs> This is probably one of the number one things Americans enjoy about traveling anywhere is experiencing food. Americans love food. The staple of any <laughs> international trip should be discovering the culture's food, which yeah. can tell you a lot about the people and the place that you're going to. And Norway yeah. is no different. Traditional Norwegian cuisine is based largely on materials readily available. Which what is this? I imagine Norway has a lot of fish. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. Looks interesting though. Means the freshness of ingredients is the name of the game. The dishes aren't necessarily complicated, but it's how you prepare it that makes it special. One of the okay. classic dishes is called smorbrod, which is essentially an open-faced sandwich, but they combine so many different unique ingredients that it makes it really special. Wow. It's also fascinating how everything is so fresh. Nothing is fresh <laughs> in America, in the United States. Nothing is fresh. Everything is processed, uh, processed food, meat, everything, packaged. Yeah, we're, we're kind of used to it though. And of course, as I've said before, the diet is centered mostly on fish. So try and eat as much seafood as you can. But that yeah. doesn't mean that you can't seek out other Norwegian delicacies. So right now I'm on the hunt for Bergen's famed reindeer hot dog. Uh, reindeer hot dog? I've never even seen a reindeer. I forgot reindeer was an animal. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, that'd be interesting to try like a, try the meat of an animal you've never even tasted before. Top with like crispy onion and some other Norwegian specialties. It's supposed to be pretty good and one of the cheapest meals you can get here. Let's get okay. this going. Okay, okay. Wow. Hello. Hi. 
Can I have one of the reindeer sausage, please? Reindeer sausage. Wow. Does that come with the crispy onions on top and everything? Yeah. Perfect. I recommend lingonberry sauce, mustard, and a crispy onion. Wow, it's really nice that Norwegians can speak English so well. Uh, one, because then you can understand what I'm saying in this video. <laughs> but also so that uh, workers and employees can communicate and, and give you reindeer sausage. I'll do it. so much okay I mean only two dollars only two dollars that's a great deal wow I don't know how to attack this all right here we go holy shit that's phenomenal I wonder what it tastes like it's always interesting tasting a meat for the first time, because all different animal meats taste pretty different. It's actually amazing. Look at that thing. Last but street art. Oh, I'd love this. I love street art. Oh, this would be awesome. But not least, number seven, street art. Now, I've always been a huge proponent of street art because I think yeah. it gives character that's unique to the city. And oh yeah, if they're like painting murals and art on the side of buildings. It's great when the city commissions it and the city promotes it and they're like, yeah, paint, paint on the city. It, it's so cool. It it's, brings more culture. It lets people experience culture more. I, I really do love it too. And in many ways, it's reflective of the local culture. And Bergen yeah. Street art scene has been explosive with hundreds, if not thousands of pieces covering its walls. There's even wow. a website, bergenstreetart.com, where you can find the latest works and oh. newest pieces. Interestingly enough, the famous street artist Banksy actually made a visit here in 2000, way before he was well known, and completed huh. eight pieces, many of which had been covered up by the city, not knowing that later on they would sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Huh. Hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a part of street art, that the art isn't permanent. That's kind of like part of it, so I, I get it. Before you go, I've partnered with a great new company called Indohemp. Okay, I, I, <laughs> I think that's the end of his video. Uh, that was by Cal McKinley. That was really nice. I liked that a lot. That was actually great. And I liked that he was an American, I think. So he made a lot of points that really spoke to me, where I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I think. <laughs> he, and he liked a lot of stuff that I would like if I, were, if I went to Bergen. Man, Americans really need to learn about this stuff, because this is amazing. Like, Americans have no idea what they're missing out on. They, uh, they don't even know what's going on in Oslo. They don't know what's going on in Bergen. But Bergen was incredible. It is beautiful. I think it's the second most populated city in Norway. And I can see why. It's incredible. And it's got so many, like, amazing things to go there and appreciate the city and appreciate the people and the culture. There's just endless stuff to see and do all in one place. That's amazing. That's like, yeah. I, I was very impressed by this. It's, uh... Obviously, <laughs> part of me was expecting it to be amazing, and it was, so there you go. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, uh, Norwegian culture, cities, places, news, stuff I've never seen before, feel free <laughs> to subscribe for more. And until then... Thanks for watching, and see you next time.